Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing UFO in the 15-minute pool on ICC. We have an unidentified flying object in our path, and he is playing the Sicilian. Um, hmm. Let's go with the Alapin, C3 on move 2. And he plays D5, one of the most common replies. So we'll take and play D4. Yeah, the good old Alapin Sicilian. Oftentimes, White will take on an IQP in this line, an isolated Queen's Pawn. All right, so let's just play Knight F3. Now I want to expand my chess horizons a little bit and embrace structures like that. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing this, too. The Alapin produces a lot of IQP positions. E6 does lock in a light square bishop. It is possible, but I'm not unhappy to see that move. Um, okay, knight f6. I can play the bishop to e2 or d3. d3 seems like a more active square. I lose my queen's defense of the d-pawn, but I don't really need that right now, so I'm going to play bishop d3. Bishop e2 is often played in this line, but it's uh, mainly useful if it's preventing like a bishop on g4 capturing the knight, let's say, or relieving a pin. So I think I can be a bit bolder here and play bishop d3. So if he plays knight c6 and I castle, it's important to note that he could not take on d4 because after the trades, I would have bishop b5 check. So, okay, looks like we're both going to castle. Sometimes if they avoid taking this pawn for too long, you can play c4 and attack their queen, force it away. So if he castles, I'll consider something like that. Plays knight c6, okay. I could play bishop e3. Again, the capture on d4 is not yet a threat for the reason I just mentioned. c takes d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop b5 check, discovered attack on his queen. Now the challenge is finding a move that makes sense for me um, that also uh, keeps that threat alive. So maybe a move like rook e1. Don't really want to play knight a3. Knight bd2 would just block my d-file presence. I want that knight to end up on c3. So I'm thinking rook e1 might be the way to go. Yeah, let's play rook e1. And I predict castles. I predict he castles or takes on d4. If he takes on d4, I'll be happy because then after c takes, I can develop my knight to c3. Okay, he does tick. We can't really expect our 1856 rated opponent to blunder with knight takes d4, but uh, yeah, he just plays castles. Now we get to do this, knight c3. Looking at my opponent's stats, by the way, he has a peak rating of 1898. Played about 1400 15 minute games. Queen all the way back to d8. Okay, so now knight takes d4 is still not a problem. Um, I want to create a queen bishop battery on the b1 h7 diagonal. That's an important plan. So a3 is the move that jumps out at me right away with the plan of going uh, bishop c2 and then queen d3. And you might be thinking like, well, why don't you just play bishop c2 right away? And the answer is I don't want to be bothered by knight b4. I would actually rule, I would love to rule out knight b4 altogether because if I do that, um, then he can't even transfer the knight to d5 which a lot of players will do to blockade that square. So yeah, we're going to play bishop c2, and then queen to d3 soon. And then I'll be looking to bring this dark square bishop out, and probably g5 will be the destination. So let's go ahead and do this. Because let's say he plays a normal move like rook c8 now. When I play bishop g5, what will I be threatening? You could pause your video if you want to think about that. So if I play bishop g5 next move, what would I be threatening? The answer is bishop takes f6. So removing the defender of h7. And because of this, after I play bishop g5, or even before, he is going to be inclined to make a pawn weakness. So he'll probably play uh, either g6 in order to block me on the long diagonal altogether, or h6 to stop my bishop from coming to g5. 
I'm lucky because I've looked at positions like this uh, very recently uh, with some students. And um, actually, uh, there's a guy, uh, JD Cannon, on YouTube. Jonathan Cannon is his name. He's on uh, chess.com as well. Uh, very nice guy. And he's made um, a series of videos on IQP structures, coincidentally. So I would highly recommend you go check out his channel. Um, so my opponent plays a6, taking away the b5 square, but this doesn't really interfere with my plan. So I think I'm going to play bishop g5, threatening bishop takes f6. Pretty much has to play g6 now. He does. Okay, so he has a weakness, and that weakness is h6. So I could bring my bishop in right there and attack his rook if I want. But I think I'm probably going to play like rook ad1 first. I'll just wait and see. I'm going to keep bishop h6 in reserve. This is just a good square for my rook. You want the rooks on the two center files, d1 and e1, typically, when you possess the isolated queen's pawn. He could play knight d5, looking to trade pieces. If he does that, now I'm thinking I'll play bishop h6. Yeah, let's go bishop h6 now and attack that rook on f8. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. This is shaping up almost identically to this game um, that I saw on JD Cannon's channel uh, recently where white played h4 and tried to go for h5. And it's also in um, this book by Baburin on uh, pawn structures, which is an excellent book published by Batsford. It's out of print now. Um, so if I play h4, though, and he takes on h4 with the bishop, what am I doing there? Because knight takes d5, um, I guess that might work. Pawn takes d5, I have rook takes e8 check, queen takes e8, knight takes h4, I win a piece. And the only other thing is, okay, if h4, bishop takes h4, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, knight takes h4, queen h5, trying to fork the bishop and the knight. I remember in J.D. Cannon's video, he actually discussed a scenario like that, but I think black's rook was on c8. And there was something important about that. Like, literally, I think this is the position, except with... Um, in our case, we have the pawn on a6, and black's rook is on a8, instead of the rook being on c8 and the pawn being on a7. Could be wrong about that. But I feel like that is close. So if h4, and h4 is a useful move because I want to go h5 and weaken his king side. So if h4, I guess another question is what happens if just knight takes c3? Knight takes c3, b takes c3, bishop takes h4, I have d5, opening lines. And if pawn takes d5, I have rook takes e8. So that might be a solution. Huh. I'm spending a little time here, but we play the opening quickly, so I don't feel bad about that. Um, I think it's justified spending a little time. All my pieces are deployed and I'm ready for action. Another candidate move would be a move like bishop b3, trying to redirect the bishop to a strong diagonal, focus against uh, the king on g8 and the d5, e6, and f7 complex. Hmm. But if bishop b3, knight a5 might be a tidy reply. You know what? I'm going to try h4. It's thematic. I've thought about it a little bit. There's some complications that I'm not completely sure about, but I think it should work out all right. And he instantly plays bishop f6. Hmm. It's like he anticipated that move. <laughs> okay, so I can play h5. There's nothing stopping me from continuing there. Is he going to play the bishop to g7? Is that his plan? All right, I'm going to go Jerry Maguire on you. Show me the money. Let's see where it's at. I mean, bishop g7 seems like a inefficient way to trade the dark square bishops, does it not? Because he could have played bishop f8 straight away if he wanted to. One virtue of bishop f6 is that now his rook on e8 is communicating with the pawn, because say the bishop was remaining on e7, um, when I take on g6, like there might be sacrificial ideas here. 
is the thing. So like now already I'll be looking at taking and then trying to sack a rook on e6 and get at that g6 pawn. Um, I think I think he's trying to bring the knight to f5 though is his plan. So if I take here, he's almost certainly going to take the h pawn. And the knight f5 is coming. Maybe I can play g4 and discourage that. So I don't think I want to allow knight f5. I can also play knight e4 and hit the bishop. Taking just seems correct, though. Hmm. Note that if I take and then take on e6, it's not working because fe and then his knight is controlling, guarding the g6 point. So moves I'd be looking at here would be knight e4, h takes g6, and pawn g4. Pawn g4 is interesting too. Maybe I can keep the tension with these pawns for one more move. I don't have to take here right away, but maybe I should take the right away to narrow his options. Yeah, I probably should. If I'm going to take, I should probably do it immediately. Okay, let's take. He does take with the h pawn. So g4 stops knight f5. Um, knight e4. If knight e4, I'm wondering if he'll just play knight f5 anyways. I can take his dark square bishop. He takes with the queen. Then my bishop on h6 is under attack. So let's say bishop g5, queen to g7. Somehow he seems solid there. Remarkably enough, because it looks like he shouldn't be, but I think he's okay. Knight e4, knight f5, take, queen takes, bishop g5. Yeah, there's probably maybe not much doing. So I'm kind of liking g4. It's a radical looking move, but I like it. Yeah, let's try it. There's no threat on d4. I've got d4 covered. Let's do it. So let's put a stop to knight f5. Unusual move, but under the circumstances, I don't know. It looks like I can get away with it. Now, whose king will be weaker? Mine when I play g4 and compromise the cover, or his that's under the gaze of my queen and light square bishop, plus the dark square bishop, also deep into the heart of his position. Got to watch my time now. He's got almost a two to one time advantage. I think I'm going to gain some of that back though. This is looking, starting to look complex. So what sort of follow-ups am I looking at here? Probably knight e4. Knight e4 is just a natural way to continue. It's the move I wanted to play last move. All right, so now he's moved back to d5. Um, bishop b3, there's knight a5 still. I think knight e4 is most appropriate. f4 is a, a bit weakened, so I have to remember that. I don't want to forget about the rook takes e6 stuff either, but it doesn't work yet. King g2 maybe, trying to go rook h1, a little bit slow. Let's play knight e4. Just see how he reacts to the attack on the bishop. I might not take that bishop even, but I don't know that my knight on c3 was achieving very much, just sitting there. Okay, bishop back to h8. Now I could go bring this knight in and like increase the pressure, but I do give up control of the f4 square if I do that. Hmm. Maybe bishop b3? Eh, not sure about that. So if knight, let's say knight eg5, I'd be threatening knight takes f7, in fact. So if knight eg5, knight f4, Queen d2. How would he play that? Also on knight e g5, knight f4, could I like take on f7 even? Hmm, it's complicated. I see some interesting ideas associated with this move though. I'm going to take a risk with less than five minutes remaining. So we're trying to get at that weak point f7. I want to crash through on g6. Hmm. 
Hmm. So if knight f4, I'm going to pull the queen back to d2. Maybe queen f6 is decent for him right here. Complicated position. It's a lot to think about. It's a very intriguing position, too. Yeah, I think if I'm him, I want to try to allocate more resources towards the king side somehow. Um, like the f4 and the f6 squares are important. The queen f6, I think, is a pretty serious candidate move for him. Um, that lends more support to the pawn on f7 and also supports knight f4 if he wants to bring the knight in. I could always repeat the position. I could play knight e4 in the event of queen f6. Knight e5 is another move I could play there. More forceful move. Let's say queen, e, queen f6, knight e5. Uh, knight takes e5, d takes e5, queen f4, attacking the g4 pawn. I have rook e4 in that case, and his queen is trapped. That's funny. Hmm, maybe we'll get our wish. Um, if knight e5, what about knight f4? Ah, it's probably nothing. Just queen over to g3. Knight e5. It certainly feels right. Pump up the pressure on f7. Could throw in knight e4 and repeat, but I don't want to just repeat with less time for no reason. If I had more time, I might repeat. Repeating with less time is a little foolish. Uh, knight e5, knight f4, queen g3, just making sure there's no danger in that position. I think that's okay. All right, let's try it. I'd feel more comfortable if I had f4 under control, <laughs> but for now, this is going to have to do. Like, if my pawn were on g3, this would be more of a no-brainer playing knight e5, I think, but just have to make sure knight f4 doesn't hurt me. So that queen trap line I was looking at was knight takes e5, d takes e5, queen f4, attacking g4, but then rook e4, and it appears his queen runs out of squares. Yeah, we're covering g4, e5 is covered. I don't see any safe squares for his queen there. Unless he can do some wacky discovery, but I don't think so. I think he's losing material in all cases there. He takes it. Okay, so pawn takes. Is he going to go queen back to e7? In that case, maybe I swing the queen over to g3 and try to creep closer and go queen h4 or maybe knight back to e4. Well, okay, we're getting our wish here. Um, let me just double check about rook e4. I think that wins material. Don't see the queen's escape routes. He can like counterattack my queen, but at the very least I take f4 and I just have one material there. Yeah, I think this is working. Nice to get a line that you <clears throat> calculate from a few moves back, too. It's always fun. Yeah, I think he's... Um, Going down a piece or having to give up the queen for a rook. The going down a piece line would be something like knight b4 right now, trying to counterattack my queen. But then I take f4, he takes d3, I take his knight. He can maybe win e5, but f7 is hanging too. It's losing for him at that point. The only, chal only challenge will be the clock, but I think we can manage. Yeah, I was definitely helped by the fact that I just happened to be studying these structures lately. And um, kind of by playing the Alapine, Alapine, I had it in the back of my head, like maybe I would get an IQP structure and lo and behold, it happened. Yeah, I think pretty clearly he didn't see rookie four. 
Otherwise, he would have played queen e7 or queen d8. But even on those moves, I think he was in pretty big trouble. I have too many pieces going in the direction of his king. Like queen e7, I was going to swing the queen over to uh, g3 most likely. My knight's great on g5 too. I'll be very curious to see the engine analysis of this. I wonder if I had anything stronger after 97. Um, when he played that on move, what was it, 18? Heading for f5, and whether g4 was justified according to the computer. So he's thinking a little bit. Takes on e5, okay. So I take, he's going to take with a knight probably, queen e3 then. All right, got to take, there's not really anything worth thinking about there. Uh, also knight takes, I could play queen f7. Maybe that's the most direct. Hitting the bishop, or sorry, queen d7. Hitting the bishop and hitting f7. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And here I can take on f7. No, he's taken with the bishop. And we're crashing through on g6. I have barely calculated that line, but it looks so good that <laughs> I just want to go for it. Yeah, knight takes f7, king takes f7, queen takes g6. If king e7, I can take f4 at the very least, and then after knight takes, play queen g5 check, winning the piece back. Also, maybe just mating him. Yeah, let's do that. That f7 point, that's a weak point in uh, IQP positions, and I know it's... um. A moot point at this one at this stage of the game but um you can see the pressure that i i had on that square throughout the game all right Check. So take that guy after king e7 rook takes d5 is also pretty convincing but i think i'll just take on f4 um bishop g5 check also good but yeah let's just do this oh if knight takes i have queen g7 mate <laughs> let's just checkmate immediately isn't it checkmate all right, so we get a nice little mate at the end. Fun one. Okay, let's go back and take a look. So the nice thing about studying isolated queen's pawn positions, like in that book by Alexander Baburin, for instance, um, he gives a lot of examples where IQP positions of the same type just arise from a variety of openings. Uh, mostly D pawn openings, but e-pawn openings as well, like the, the Alapin variation. Um, another line where IQP positions can arise out of an e4 opening is the French Terrache. So for instance, this variation, knight d2, if black plays c5, pawn takes d5. Most people play queen takes d5 these days, it seems, but e takes d5 is plenty playable. And after, say, something like this, and a subsequent capture here, you could be in an IQP position from the black side. So e-pawn openings can produce those as well. So we have the Alapin, the c3 Sicilian. Um, and on move number four here, black does have a choice. By playing e6, he commits himself to positions where the bishop is locked in. Um, personally, I would play knight f6 and stay flexible, give myself the option of playing the bishop out to g4. But uh, plenty of people play e6 too, so it's fine. So knight f3, knight f6. And like I said, I don't have to worry about a pin on this knight, so... I think I can put the bishop on d3 rather than e2. Bishop e7, castle, knight c6, rook e1. So the trap that I was referencing, if black gets too greedy, is this, and then bishop check. e5 check, attacking the queen, winning the queen. Black definitely does not want to fall for that. So they castle instead, but now I get to develop the knight to c3. Black could keep the queen active here, like play it over to a5, perhaps, but... um. It might just be misplaced there. Like if queen a5, bishop d2 becomes an option, and I can try to x-ray the queen and maybe move my knight away and attack it somehow. So I wasn't like completely surprised that he played queen d8. Now I played a3. Useful move. It stops knight b4, and it prepares this bishop c2, queen d3 battery. Um, oftentimes you want a queen bishop battery mowing down the enemy king in IQP structures, so that's why I went for this. So bishop back here, bishop b7, and then a queen d3. 
Yeah. So as I mentioned, I think this plan um, almost necessitates that black create a weakness because of the coming bishop g5. And it might be a slight weakness. It might just be black pushing a single pawn like they did in the game, g6 to block my queen bishop battery, or alternatively h6 to stop bishop g5. But that's enough for white to bite on and work with. Uh, like when they play um, after a6, bishop g5, g6, like now I have more of a reason to play h4, h5, which is one of the principal plans in this line for white. Another plan that I didn't talk too much about because it didn't come up is the, the central breakthrough d5. Oftentimes white will try to advance the IQP. Uh, once again, if you're uh, wondering about these plans, check out the Baburin book um, on pawn structure, or more accessibly, you can go to JD Cannon's channel, as I mentioned before. Um, and he's not paying me to plug that, by the way. <laughs> I just saw his videos and I thought they were good. So, um, you know, I thought if you if you want to check them out, do so. Um, so, yeah, bishop g5, he plays g6, and then rook a d1. As I mentioned, the rooks really belong on the central files. Knight d5, looking to trade. So from the white perspective, I do not want to trade pieces here unnecessarily. Like, I just wouldn't want to play, like, bishop takes e7 or knight takes d5 unless I had to because as uh, the possessor of the better pawn structure, black is hoping to simplify the position, reduce my attacking potential, and, like, grind me out in an endgame, basically. If things go according to plan, that's what black will do. Uh, so I want to be conscious about that and keep pieces on the board, keep the, the flow of the attack going. I'm going to add the engine in and see if I hit, could have improved anywhere. Um, but I want to keep my chances alive. So here the engine says I can take on d5. So if I take and he takes with, I mean, I guess he could take a number of ways. What about pawn takes? Pawn takes, I take e7, he takes with the knight. This does look somewhat better for white, which is 95 or something. Yeah, his bishop is a bit blocked. What if he takes with the queen? Queen takes, I have bishop b3. Let's say queen back to d8, bishop h6. If rook e8, yeah, and you see this move, d5, the central breakthrough. White will often be looking to do that, or whoever has the IQP will be looking to advance the IQP, offload it, and thereby open lines. Um, but I played bishop h6. I could see the value of knight takes d5, though. One other line that would have to be calculated after knight takes d5 would be bishop takes g5. But I think I can take here. Yeah, computer agrees. And his queen is overloaded. It was trying to defend b6 and g5. So white perhaps wins a pawn. Um, but I played bishop h6 attacking the rook. He goes here. Yeah, now I played h4. I wasn't completely sure about this move, but it just felt right, and... This pawn structure is ripe for an h4, h5 advance. It's just primed for that to occur. Um, there are some complications. Like one thing I was wondering, let's say he plays knight takes c3. I'd probably want to take with a pawn in order to strengthen my center. He can try to grab this guy, but I think that's pretty dangerous with white just being on the attack right now to take time out and just grab a random pawn on the queen side. I've got a lot of heat coming down on him, so... I, I can't prove a win here for white, but in a 15-minute game, this looks risky. Um, if he takes on h4, then the line I was trying to calculate was knight takes d5. And the point is, if pawn takes d5, it's simple. We take Check. on e8. Again, the queen is overloaded. It was trying to monitor the bishop and the rook. So we deflect the queen away, win the bishop. Easy game. Um, but after bishop takes, I was wondering about this line. Knight takes d5, queen takes d5, knight takes h4, queen h5. So temporarily, black is down a piece for a pawn, but they are double attacking this. And I wasn't completely sure what I was going to do. If I had more time, I would have tried to figure that out. Looks like my instincts were correct that white is better here, but I had to find queen e3. Idea, queen takes h4, and then d5. You see that d5 move cropping up all the time. It's a nifty one. Yeah, I was also, I think it crossed my mind that maybe d5 here also was good. Like maybe this is promising. But queen e3, preparing um, the pressure down the e-file is even better. And defending the bishop at the same time, too. So queen takes h4, d5. If he takes it, he's just going to get Check. mated. Like so. Check mate. Um, so, whoops, didn't mean to go that far back. But in this line, once again, so d5, 
um, or sorry, queen e3, queen takes h4, d5. I guess he has to move the knight away somewhere. And I have good play. Ah, rook d4 is one idea too. So if the knight moves away somewhere, like let's say a5, maybe I can swing the rook up and attack the queen. Yeah, looks like white has good compensation. But complex nonetheless. And if I had more time, I would calculate that all the way. But um, he instantly played bishop f6 after I played h4. Because he probably knew that he wants e6 better protected. If I get like two more moves, I'm going to play h5, take. And then if all goes according to plan, I'll set up rook takes e6 and queen takes g6. So he plays bishop f6. Now the rook is communicating with the pawn. I went ahead and played h5. Yeah, knight e4 also comes to mind. But I went ahead and played h5. And knight back to e7. Okay, this is one of the main positions I was curious about. Because I played an outwardly pretty risky move. Take and then g4, keeping the knight out of f5. The computer's not thrilled about it, but it doesn't say black is better. I was liking just the straightforward knight e4. I wasn't sure if I wanted to allow the knight to f5, though. Attacking the bishop on h6. I like that bishop here. I don't like their knight on f5 blocking my queen bishop battery and attacking d4. But apparently, Check. take, queen takes, bishop g5, queen g7, h6. What happens if he takes it? d5? Wow, sharp. And then if pawn takes, we can swap Check. the rooks. I take here. And I'm down a pawn, but my peace activity is enormous. And I have the bishop pair. The computer thinks it's winning. <laughs> Not obvious to a human eye, but um, I could definitely see why white has great play here. My coordination looks much better than his. So knight e4 was also good. Interesting. But g4, can't write off that move either. I mean, it creates weaknesses, undoubtedly. f4 is weakened, my king is weakened, but keeps a, a piece out of f5. I'm trying to stop him from transferring resources to help his king. That's what I'm trying to do with that. So he comes back to d5 after that move. I played knight e4. He went bishop h8. That maybe is a mistake. Yeah, maybe bishop g7 is better. Offering a trade of bishops. I would probably play queen d2 against that, so that if a trade occurs, it occurs on my terms. And maybe I can get a knight into g5 after that. He probably wouldn't want to take on h6 in that case. Something like queen c7 instead, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, for him, I think it would have been worth slowing down a little bit. He was still playing pretty fast. Like, look at his time. He has 1041. He played bishop h8. Eh, maybe the computer's coming around to that move, but I just get the feeling he was a little um, he was a little flippant in his defense. So I played knight e g5. Yeah, this is nice because now I'm I'm setting up the threat of uh, knight takes f7, and after king takes, crashing through on g6. So he played queen f6, the move I thought he might play. If knight f4, I was just prepared to play queen d2, just drop the knight, uh, the queen back. And this knight doesn't have anywhere devastating to go through, go to. It can't go to h3. I would just take it. So maybe this position is just tough for black. The computer says play queen c7 and guard the f7 pawn that way. And maybe keep open knight f4. But white has good pressure still. Bishop b3, I can transfer the bishop to this diagonal. Hmm. Well, nevertheless, queen f6, I play knight e5. He takes, because I am attacking f7 again. I guess he could try to defend it with a move like that, but that looks pretty ugly. Queen h3. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm threatening funny stuff like bishop f8, maybe. Uh, I guess my knight on g5 might hang, but I was thinking bishop f8 to make way for queen h7. Or if he takes with his king, knight h7 check. There must be something working here, though. Oh, knight e4 is a big threat. So if he just plays something random, like, whoops, like um, rook e8 or something, and yeah, knight e4 is trapping his queen. Because my queen coming over to h3 took away the h4 square. Yeah, I could have played that on the previous move, but he has that square to go to, attacking the bishop. If bishop g5, wow, this is complicated. Knight takes e5, attacking my queen, OK. And if I take here, he takes g4 with check. 
So after 95, um, the summary of that is I have good pressure, and it seems like the tactics are working in my favor overall. Uh, he took, I took with a pawn attacking the queen. Yeah, now he must retreat, I think, like back to e7. But I was just going to play the queen over to g3, and I like the fact that I'm creeping closer. I probably have threats against his king very soon. Um, f6 in order to try to like eject my knight or make way for his queen to defend along the, the seventh, seventh rank. That's always risky because um, I can take and then g6 will be weak too. So I don't know if he can ever get away with that. But he played queen f4, walking headlong into rook e4. Pretty sure he didn't see that move. Yeah, now he has to give up material. He played bishop takes e5, but there's not really a good solution. I was um, speculating that he might try a move like that, after which I was saying at the very least I can take his queen and then be up a piece after that. But I guess there might even be stronger moves. Like That's kind of funny. I can play rook takes b4 even. And even from a distance, my rook is still helping to trap his queen. If here, I assume knight takes f7 is equally devastating. Although I probably would not have gone for that. I wouldn't let his queen escape. I would just probably just take his queen and play up the piece. Be, uh, be at plus 6 or plus 7. So he took e5. I took here. Yeah, if knight takes, I was going to play queen d7, attacking here, and also f7. So he took with a bishop instead, and I took f7, crashing through. So even got a thematic knight sacrifice in at the end against his weak structure. Check. Yep, and it's all over. Queen g7, or just take like I did. and Check mate. He takes back and walks into mate. Okay, so as you can gather from this game, um, isolated queen spawn positions are extremely rich, and... Whatever your level, uh, I think you could benefit from studying this. I'd say, you know, players 1400 and below, don't worry about um, uh, specific plans and this sort of thing. Like for you guys, it's enough to know, like generally what's going on in an IQP position. Like White, who has the IQP here, doesn't want to exchange pieces. He wants to play for an attack. He wants to play actively. Black wants to try for exchanges. He wants to try to negate White's attacking potential and trade down to an endgame and win with the better pawn structure. That's enough for uh, you lower-rated players to know, but um, some of you class players and higher, you can really improve your chess by studying these positions and the associated plans and playing them for both sides. Like, don't just specialize in playing like with the IQP, or as many people do, don't just specialize playing against the IQP, because it's easy. Um, uh, try to embrace these positions, which is something I've been doing lately. So, Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.